Lord, I drink of your waters right now. Lord, I drink of your waters right now. <laughs> Let your river flow out of my heart. Let your river flow out of my belly right now. Let me help you with something. It won't take you long to shout. It won't take long. I know you might not feel like shouting, but you start shouting, it won't take long and the river take over you. You Listen, the scripture says in Isaiah chapter 12 that we will draw waters from the well of salvation with praise. With praise, therefore with joy shall you draw water from the well. We're talking about drinking. Back in the days of the Lord Jesus Christ, you went to a well to drink. And so when he was talking about drinking, everybody pictured a well. And he said, I'm the well. Now, we're not going to be those who say it and don't have it. Listen, we're not going to be those who with our mouth draw nigh to God, but our heart's far from him. Uh Uh-uh. So what I want you to do is I want you to get filled with the Spirit here tonight. Hallelujah. I want you to begin to, I want you to begin, hallelujah. Ah, ah, Hallelujah. Ah, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to be filled with the Spirit. Speak to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Sing and make melody. Sing and make melody. Woo-hoo. Sing and make melody. Woo-hoo. Sing and make melody. Oh, Lord, I drink of the waters of life. Lord, I drink of the waters of life. <laughs> Lord, I drink of the waters of life. Let your rivers flow out of my heart. Let your rivers flow out of my belly. Right now. <laughs> Woo. Oh, yeah. Right there, right there, right there, right there, right there. Woo-hoo. <laughs> Woo. If you're willing to receive, something will happen. The transformation will take place. Sickness and disease will leave your body. Hindering spirits will no longer be able to oppress you. The things that have stood in your way will not be able to stay there no longer. Yeah, just believe me. Hallelujah, I drink of the waters of life. <laughs> Lord, I drink of the waters of life. <laughs> Lord, I drink of the waters of life. <laughs> Let your rivers flow out of my heart. Let your rivers flow out of my belly. Right now. You have pain in your in your left shoulder. Somebody's got some kind of a torn. You, you may you may have a, a torn uh, rotor cuff. Pain in your left shoulder. It's you, huh? You got a right shoulder. Which one's hurting? Both of them. Specifically, left shoulder. You got pain in your left shoulder. Rotary cuff. It's you. Begin to lift your. It, it, I don't, I'm not going to limit it to left shoulder, but it's the pain's leaving right now. If, you're, if it's in both left and right, begin to lift them. Go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Come on. If you got pain in your shoulder, it's going to go out right now. I have power over all pain right now in the name of Jesus. I'm on the war path right now. You understand me? You understand? I understand. I'm not allowing, I'm not allowing any pain or sickness or disease. I'm not allowing any hindrance. I'm not allowing any rebellion. I'm crushing it right now by the anointing. Hallelujah. Just go ahead and move those arms around. Move it, move it, move it, move it, move it, move it, move it. Move it, move it, move it. Move it, move it, move it, move it, move it. Move it till the pain is gone. There should be move it, move it, move it, move it, move it, move it, move it. My dear brother, you weren't able to bring the person who's mute tonight. Okay, they went to the wrong place. Are they coming? Well, I'm telling you, I believe that God would do a, have a miracle service tonight for everybody who has stammering lips. You stutter or you can't speak. God would loose the, t- God would loose the string of your tongue. 
Christ Jesus is here to prove himself. Satan is doing everything he possibly can do to stop the manifestation of a living God and a presence, present Jesus. I'm telling you right now, I'm not holding the fort down. I'm not taking some defensive posture because those who do are neutralized. God called us to be aggressive, to advance everything. Go everywhere and destroy, to conquer. Destroy, destroy, yeah, destroy, destroy all the powers of darkness. Hallelujah. Main wrong John day. I want to be a terror to pain and sickness and disease and every oppressive, tormenting thing. There's no reason that you need to live another day looking like the powers of darkness when you can now start looking like the power of the kingdom of God. You start looking like heaven instead of looking like hell in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's time for God's people to start looking like heaven. It is time for God's people to start looking like heaven. Anybody else got, you still got a pain? Anybody got pain? Is there pain still in your arm? Just lift it up there. Just lift it up. You have pain in your arm? Did the pain go out? All the, is pain, all the pain gone? That's good. This is the right arm. Father, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, dear Lord. Hey, it's good to see you back here tonight. You know, the Lord has great, Father has great blessings and promises that he wants to fulfill in your, our lives. And I'm going to say tonight specifically your life. But you've got to be willing to cooperate with him. You've got to be willing to do it his way. Hallelujah. Come drink of the water of life. <laughs> Come drink of the waters of life. Come and drink of the waters of life. Let the river flow out of your heart. Let the river flow out of your belly right now. It's good to see you here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you, man. Thank you, Father, for the anointing in this life. Thank you, Father God, for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. There's nothing so wonderful as the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Nothing so wonderful. My Persian friend, welcome. Welcome. Hallelujah. Let it drink of the water of It's better than any drink you'll drink. Drink of the water of life. Come and drink of the water of life. Let the river flow out of your heart. Let the river flow out of your belly. Right now. Hallelujah. Hey, you know what? Woo! You know, ah, you was your little man today. Ah, hallelujah. You know what? It's the cure for whatever the problem may be. It is. If you're not happy, you'll get happy. It's true. If you didn't have love overwhelming you, love will immediately begin to overwhelm you. Ah, drink of the water of life. Mm -hmm. Come drink of the water of life. I will drink of the water of life. Let the river flow out of my heart. Let the river flow out of my belly. Right now. Hallelujah. Listen, here's what I've discovered. Here's what I've discovered. When the enemy tries to come in like a flood, tries to do all these things, you know what you do? You just get lost in the glory. You get lost in praise. You begin to shout. You begin to laugh. You begin to give thanks. Don't pay any mind to that troublemaker. <laughs> rather, we turn the heart to the one 
who really is the only rainmaker. <laughs> There's only one rainmaker. People talk about men being rainmakers. No man can be a rainmaker. Only God is the rainmaker. He'll open up heaven and cause floods to fall upon your soul and upon your spirit. Hallelujah. I'm going to, I, by the power of the living God, will strike pain from this place tonight. By the power of the name of Jesus, I'm striking pain right now. Somebody said, well, that sounds pretty emotional. Everything about God is emotional. He does not from the planet Vulcan. He's not of the philosophical group called the Stoics. He is full of joy. He's full of love. He's full of peace. He's full of goodness, full of love, full of joy, full of peace, full of goodness. What a life, what a life, what a life, abundant life flowing out. Hallelujah. He's full of love, full of joy, full of peace, full of goodness, full of love, full of joy, full of peace, full of goodness, full of love, full of peace, full of joy. Full of goodness, full of life, abundant life, flowing out. Woo, woo, woo. Woo, 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 Hallelujah. Woo, 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 woo. Hallelujah. Now, you notice, you notice, you hear the sound of my voice changing? Something. That a thing trying to tickle my throat. Well, it's out now. You just, you know, somebody said, how do you get rid of that stuff? Praise him. Praise him. Do things like this. It's full of love, full of joy, full of peace, full of goodness, full of love, full of joy, full of peace, full of goodness, full of love, full of joy, full of peace, full of goodness, full of life. Abundant life flowing out. Full of love, full of joy, full of peace, full of goodness, full of love, full of joy, full of peace, full of goodness, full of love, full of joy, full of peace, full of goodness, full of life. Abundant life. Full of love, full of joy, full of peace, full of goodness, full of love, full of joy, full of peace, full of goodness, full of love, full of joy, full of peace, full of goodness, full of life, abundant life. Whoa. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Full of love, full of joy, full of peace, full of goodness, full of love. Full of joy, full of peace, full of goodness, full of love, full of joy, full of peace, full of goodness, full of life, abundant life, flow it out. Full of life, full of joy, full of peace, full of goodness, full of love, full of joy. Full of peace, full of goodness, full of love, full of joy, full of peace, full of goodness, full of love, abundant life. Full, full of love, full of joy, full of peace, full of goodness, full of goodness, full of love, full of joy, full of peace. Full of goodness, full of life, abundant life, flowing up. Come on, shout! Come drink of the water of life. Come and drink of the water of life. 
come and drink of the water. <laughs> the river flow out of your heart. Let the river flow out of your valleys. Right now. Woohoo! Hallelujah. 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 Well, dear people, I want you to learn something tonight. How you feeling? Huh? How are you feeling? How you feeling now? <laughs> Just have a seat for a few more minutes. You stand up again later. God's people are aggressive. Not defensive. People sit around praying, hoping that God will come. He came. He gave us power and authority to advance in his name. <laughs> There's so many times you get stuck in a situation that opposes you, a pain, a sickness, a disease, a sin, a problem. And you allow it to still make you. You just stand there and look at it. As though somehow God's going to come make it disappear. He told you, shout at it. He said, speak to that mountain. He said, go everywhere. Proclaiming liberty to the captive. Opening up the prison doors. God's looking for somebody to get aggressive. Satan's running right over top of people's lives. Running right over top of everything. The church is sitting back in the shadows waiting for God. Waiting for somebody to give them permission. Because God's already gave you permission. Sitting around waiting for the world to say, okay, now we want to understand what it is you got to say. Nobody wants to see hear what you got to say. <laughs> Within the framework of the world, you don't have to stand up and begin to open your mouth and proclaim something Amen. that changes the situation around you. For everybody who received, we just struck pain from the place here in this few minutes ago. Yes, we did. My wife has been in, my wife has been in severe pain agonizing pain. Most people have rushed to the emergency room with the pain that's, that hit her. And you know, the thing about it is, is you say, well, you know, what? You know, she's had it since this morning. Why didn't you get rid of it earlier? As far as I was concerned, it was already gone. That's why we didn't go to the emergency room. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But then there just comes the place I'm ready to start turning tables over. Huh? I get fire in my eyes. If you've been around me for a while, you see me, something happens. He goes, you know, we know that he's a pretty nice guy. Pretty pleasant guy. Pretty normal. Pretty reasonable. But there's every once in a while something happens. And it ain't because I'm tired either. It's because I see the devil doing things he's not allowed to do. Huh? I'm telling you, yes, come on now. I don't know about you, but I didn't let anybody push me around when I was on the school ground. I just didn't do it. And when I found out that the enemy, I, when the enemy of my soul was not allowed to push me around, <laughs> I rose up in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might. I said, this way things are going to be. Hallelujah. All I got to do is get people from being sad, dejected, and, de and, and despondent, and we'll get a move of God. Because God is very emotional. He dances and shouts and sings over you. What are you going to do? Just sit there and listen to him? I'm going to get up and, I'm going to get up and out shout him. I'm going to get up and shout him down. I'm going to get up and I'm going to dance out. I'm going to out dance him. I'm going to out dance him. I'm going to out dance him. I'm going to be dancing over me. I'm going to be dancing over him. Hallelujah. See, when you begin to interact with the Lord like this, the powers of darkness, sin, sickness, disease, pain, torment, can't get in the middle. Cannot get in the middle. Can't, be, can't even be on the block. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Huh? I mean, Satan will get to the place where he knows he better not aggravate you. Yeah, you listen, you listen to me. How are you listening to me? Here's all that gets me. As soon as I feel something messing with the anointing, Soon as I feel something messing with that divine manifestation of his glory, I'm not going to sit back and let it happen. Because Papa put me in charge. 
He put you in charge if you want to be in charge, but I'm being charge. God's got people in the church who will not sit back and take the nonsense that the powers of darkness, that the strongholds of hell are trying to place upon God's people because that's just, that's just what Satan loves to do. Jesus Christ defeated him 2,000 years ago and, he, and he's rebellious and he don't believe it and he tries to act like he has not been defeated and he places things upon people and he does all kinds of, of various different tricks to try to stop the flow of heaven within our soul. But there's some people like me. It's like, it's not going to go down that way. It ain't going to happen that way. I'm going to lift up my voice and shout. I'm going to lift up my voice and praise him. People, it's the greatest weapons of our warfare. Weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty. It's not by the power of, 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 of human ability. It's not by the arm of flesh. It's by the shout. It's by the shout. I said it's by the shout. Now, you know, that's one thing depressed people don't do. They don't shout. Depressed people don't get very loud at all. In fact, psychologists try to make that part of the therapy. Get them to shout a little bit. Get them to, get them to talk a little bit louder because they all bottled up. I understand what that is. Satan shutting down the voice of man, any man. He wants to shut everybody up. He wants to put everybody in a prison of silence and despair and insanity and torment. And oppression. How much more does he want to stop the praises of the people of God? He ain't stopping my praises. And I'm tell you right now, when I watch people, if they've got any level of maturity, sitting around letting the enemy run all over top of them, and it's supposed to be that way. <laughs> and it's supposed to be that way. The Lord Jesus said over here, and he said over here in Luke chapter 12, I, chapter 10, I read it. And what he said is true. And what he said cannot be altered. What he said cannot be changed. What he said lasts forever. What he said religion cannot bottle up. Persecution cannot stop. People prophesied my doom and end years ago. Ha! Ha! I start telling people all the things that God has done through our lives and done through the ministry, and they just think we're lying. They don't believe it because they don't think there's enough people. But I don't need enough people. He just needs one person to believe him. Huh? Jesus, really, Jesus, all Jesus had was the Father. That's what he said. He said, I didn't receive the witness of man. I don't need the witness of the man. I have one who witnessed and testified of me, and that's the Father, and he's going to do some miracles so that you can see it. I'm going to say, pain, I strike you. And everybody who's got any kind of hookup with me, immediately it's stricken. Stricken. Eh? Yes. It just works that way, doesn't it? <laughs> What happens, we let the sick, you know, we're going after the sickness, we're going after pain, saying, stop that, I said, stop that, I said, stop it now. I laid hands on my wife out four or five times a day, then I got aggravated. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Why? Because Satan has to listen to me. He's rebellious, and what happens is many of God's people just, they, they just, they cower. They stop. They stop short of the breakthrough. They've never understood how to pray till the glory manifests glories in their life. Therefore, they never hadn't understood how to stand against the powers of darkness and demand something. Right. Yep. <laughs> People mistaken, they thought that I was upset or mad at somebody, some person. I'm mad at somebody, but it ain't you. <laughs> Somebody said, well, is he here? Sometimes. He's not now. <laughs> it's the realm of darkness. I tell you, you listen to me. You obey me. You start shouting. You get that voice up. Huh? Don't just get your voice up there. Speak on behalf of your own interest. Get that voice there lifted up to worship God and begin to praise him. Huh? I had the Holy Spirit said to me this afternoon about 5 o'clock, Holy Spirit said, how long are you going to let the enemy push you around? <laughs> yeah. Because we really engaged in some things starting Friday night. 
We had to engage in something. Sometimes the Lord just, you know, it just we come up against things that we don't understand how it happens while it works out that way. But what happens is we know we have the resource. See, it's, we know we have the ability and the power. We don't have to go get help from men. We don't have to fear. We don't have to worry. Because the Lord has given us an authority. And, and, and I, want you to, I want to help you understand something. Don't fall into a ditch of defeat. You, 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 you say, well, I prayed. I cried out to God. I lifted up my voice. Well, don't stop. Take it up another notch. Let me say that again. Take it up another notch. Don't give up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you begin to stand fast in the things of the living God, you know what's happening? You're going to get strong in the faith. As you increase with the increase of God, you're only going to increase when there's an increase to the manifest presence of God. That's what Paul was, say, Paul was saying when he said, increase with the increase of God. There is an increase of God in your life if you're willing. There's an increased manifestation of the presence of God in your life if you're willing. But it ain't going to happen with you backing down. It ain't going to happen there. It happens in the midst of the fight. Huh? You know what the scripture says concerning faith? Scripture says they, that they waxed or they grew strong in fight. <laughs> then they say they grew strong in the night when they were sleeping. They say they were, grew, grew strong while they were watching the 49ers beat the uh, Seahawks. Said they said they waxed strong in fight. I was, watch, I was watching the game. I was watching the game until the Lord said, how long are you going to let the enemy push you around? Then I got up and started moving things around in the spirit. And nobody there but my wife and me and my voice began to cry out to God in a way which only is possible when the spirit of the living God is present. And it comes like a forcefulness of the very power of God himself. He descri Jesus Christ described it as rivers of living water because he was trying to talk about the force of the expression of the Holy Ghost, the person, the Holy Spirit. Sickness doesn't belong in my house. I watch too many people bow to sickness. I watch them bow their knee to sin, too. Sin is a little threat of intimidation comes along. They bow their knee. Then they read about the three Hebrew children and then they fantasize that that's what they would have done. It's what I would have done. I would have not bowed my knee. And that's going to be proven in my life today. And it's going to be proven in my life tomorrow. And it's been proven in my life over and again. I'm not bowing my knee <laughs> to the threats of Satan. Nebuchadnezzar said, when you hear the music, huh? When you hear the trumpets blasting, you better bow your knee to the idol and the image of myself that I made. Otherwise, we're going to throw you in a fire. Everybody's down on the ground. There's these three guys standing there. All the brethren of Israel and of the Median, Medes and the Persians, those of Babylon and of other nations, they all got down on their face in fear. There's three guys standing there. Hero King, you do whatever you want to do to us. But we're not bowing to you. <laughs> That's, listen, it's not just a story told so that we can be fascinated about the faith of someone else. It is, a, it is a message given so that you and I can understand the same kind of faith that they had as ours right now. That we're going to go through similar kinds of opposition. And if our response will be as theirs, our end will be as theirs as well. You may be thrown into the fire, but the flame will not kindle upon you. This is true. This is true. They may flow you, throw you into the flood, but you will not drown. When you pass through the water, I will be with you, says the Lord. Hallelujah. It's wonderful to know when he's with us. I know he's with me always. I know that he set his affections upon me and he loves me. He it does. He proves it to me over and again. Over and over again. There's this place that we pass by every once in a while. And I remember the night we were passing by and 
we were in a truck and we were pulling a, a tractor. We were starting to get the mission training center set up. And I told, I told my wife about three or four miles previous, I said, well, I'm just going to drive all the way. And then I got, to this, got near this exit and the Lord said, no, turn off. I said, okay, well, I'm going to turn off. We turned off because it was this holiday in there. Holiday, that, the Express, which is better. And the newer one. And as soon as I drove up in the front, the car died. And uh, as soon as I got there. And, and it would have died wherever I was at that very instant. Because it was a faulty part. And there was a Ford right around the block. So they could come and get the truck. And take it over there. And they told me, oh yeah, it's a recall part. It has a certain lifespan. So we're going to change it out for you for free. We'll call you when we're done. And so we were in the hotel sleeping. Huh? Papa just loves me. He does that kind of stuff for me all the time. He loves me. He's constantly proving his love for me. He wants to constantly prove his love for you. It's so much better to walk around with the Holy Ghost than to commune with demon spirits. So much better to walk around with angels. Rather the influence of that which will destroy your soul in hell. And, and, and furthermore, even if you wouldn't go so far with the devil that he would destroy your soul in hell, you wouldn't go so far as to allow him to work his iniquity in your life, yet you go so far with them that you would let him afflict you and torment you. When you decide sickness does not belong in the temple of the living God, you're not going to have it anymore. And when it comes at you, you'll defeat it. <laughs> Hallelujah. You'll cast it down. Fear won't grip your heart. In the name of Jesus, never again. Amen. Never again. It's a terrible thing going through all the symptoms of a heart attack. It's a terrible thing. It's a terribly painful thing. And never again. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Fear, people can't let fear grip your heart. You can't let circumstances overwhelm your, overwhelm your soul. When your heart is overwhelmed, what should you do? What should you do? Yeah, yeah, you should be led to the rock. Who is higher than you? That rock. That Paul said, followed them in the wilderness. In verse Corinthians chapter 10. The rock that everyone drank from a supernatural supply of water came out of a rock that followed them around. And all, 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 all that had to happen for that water to supply to come forth from the rock is the one who was anointed of God, who stood in the place of God, had to strike the rock, had to smite the rock. Speaking of Christ Jesus being stricken at Calvary. And as soon as he was stricken, as soon as he was put to death on Calvary's cross, a supply and a provision of heaven was made available to every man that would believe. It's time for you to grow up in the faith. It's time for you to stop acquiescing to the spirit of this world, to the fear, to the torment, to the philosophies of men. Cease from men. The prophet Isaiah said, Isaiah chapter 2, verse 23, he said, Cease from men in whom, the, they, in whom is only the breath of life in their nostrils. Cease from men, in other words, they don't know anything. Cease from men. They no sooner come into this world and they're gone. Cease from men, following men. They like the flower of the field. They like the grass that withers. The flower fades away. It's remembered no more. That's the ultimate, the penultimate of their glory. Cease from men. With total abandonment, give yourself over to the living God. Recognize that the things that Jesus said is true. All you have to do is learn as a child in simple faith to participate. Say, uh, saying, I come to the water of life. I drink of the water of life. Because I can still talk to the rock right now. The second time, 
God said only speak to the rock. Because that's where we're at right now. Jesus doesn't need to be crucified again for your sin. He doesn't need to come again so that you can have an experience with the power of the living God. So that you can walk around in the divine grace and authority which he's given. It's been made available once and forever for anyone who desires. All you have to do is ask. All you have to do is say, I drink of the water of life. Lord, I drink of the water of life. Ha <laughs> ha. Lord, I drink of the water of life. So that your river flows out of my heart. That your river flows out of my belly. Right now. <laughs> and ha <laughs> ha. Hallelujah. And, 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 and then if you are moving in faith with God, there's a change in the atmosphere. Can you feel it? Huh? There's a change in the atmosphere. Happened in your living room as well as it happening right here in the midst of the church. Change in the disposition. Does it. Makes it happen. It is something that does not come out of the realm of men's thinking, but out of the deep passions of the Spirit of the living God. Because you give yourself over to that realm. You will not be denied. You will not be held back. You will not allow the powers of darkness to stop you. This is what Jesus said. I'm going with what Jesus said. If he said to do it, he's a captain of my salvation. I'm following him. You follow whoever you want. You have the choice. As for me and my house, I'm following Jesus. Some situation and a, and a whole family tried to, tried to intimidate my family not too long ago that we should follow in their rebellion. No, you know, I'm not kidding you. I said, you got to be kidding, man. I've come too far now to be taught by you. I'll just call the fire of God down right now. Give me a break. Are you out of your mind? Understand. God's calling you, come walk with him. We walk in with Jesus. We, we're walking with the king of kings. What are you talking about? We're going to turn away from walk with the king of kings and go in your religion. You're out of your mind. And your religion, your God, centerpiece of your religion is the, is the God called rebellion. No way. See, I have, a, I have a sensitivity towards the God of peace. He is the God of all comfort. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, I have a sensitivity <laughs> towards the God of all comfort. Huh? Hallelujah. I'm not going to be uncomfortable. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to be comfortable. Amen. Amen. Even in the midst of the fire, you can be comfortable. I love the long version of Daniel chapter 2 that is found in the Septuagint where the three Hebrew children begin to praise God in the midst of the fire and describe how the, the dew of heaven came down upon them and the glory of God overwhelmed them and the flame could not kindle upon them for the flame obeyed the command of the living God. And, the, and they were his servants. And they begin to describe there in that, I believe it's a total of 50 verses. Hallelujah. That glorious experience that took place. You know what? I'm not apart from that. I live in that. I, I truly believe that I can go forth in the name of Jesus Christ and I can break off the strongholds off of people, individuals, and nations. All they've got to do is be willing to respond to the voice of Christ Jesus, the voice of His commands, the Word of the living God. If there's any responsiveness in their heart, the power of God will flow into their life. It's true. It's true. And then you go some places and you catch the devil off guard because the people don't even know. And you just stand up and you smile at the place and everybody gets delivered from the powers of darkness. They just got to go out because you stepped in. Now, understand. When I stepped into those places in those different nations, though I went there and know I had an anointing for that nation, nothing happened when I was in the hotel room. Nothing happened when I was in the restaurant. 
But when I stood in the position of representing God, Christ Jesus, then the place was shaken. You hear me? Yes. Nothing's going to much happen in the routines of your life if you're going to hold on to yourself and live your own life. But when you step in the position of Christ Jesus, all heaven is mobilized on your behalf to run off every power of hell. This is the gospel. Jesus come to destroy the works of the devil. Isn't that awesome? This is the truth. I lie not. This is the truth as it is in Christ Jesus. This city is absolutely under the stronghold of religion. It will die in its trespasses and sin unless there comes an awakening and a move of God. This place is gripped with the power of religion on a level that is, that is terrifying to think of. In such, I am so aware of it that I cry out passionately to God, Father, only you can break the yoke. Father, it's only by your mighty power behold their threatenings. Oh, God, you see. I sh listen, listen to me. I didn't start doing this last year. I started speaking like this and prophesying like this. 35 years ago, 35 years ago. Go back and look at the tapes. They're there. Go back and look at the writings. They're there. Nothing's changed. The same word he put in my mouth then, he has faithfully kept in my mouth at this very moment in time. And by his grace, we'll stand here and we'll speak these things. And I guarantee you this, God who has commanded and God who has sent us will also make it manifest. That it is his glory and his power and his will that will be accomplished through it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I say that for you. I'm going to prophesy over you. God wants to use you in a mighty way, but you're going to have to find a place of standing with him, a place where you will not be moved. I remember when I first really just totally gave my life over to the Lord. You know, I'm standing there singing the song. It's like a tree that's planted by the water. I should not be moved. And as I sang it, I felt, I felt a divine power and divine strength touch my soul. I mean, I felt the roots go down. I felt, a, I felt the very life of God establishing in my, in my spirit. Yep, that's who you are. You will not be moved. This is a grace. Just grace. Woo, it's grace. Let me, read, let me read what Jesus said. Jesus said this. Hallelujah. In verse 19, first of all, I like to kind of, I like to go right in here. Verse 17, and the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, <laughs> even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Let me stop right there because I just got to say something about that. Hallelujah. These aren't guys that have been around very long. These aren't guys that went to Bible school. These aren't guys that grew up in a Holy Ghost church watching men of God flowing the anointing for umpteen years. Huh? These are a couple, these are a few uh, uneducated people who followed Jesus around for about a year and a half. Beholding the power and the glory of God that was upon his life. And as far as they, was, they were concerned, only he had the ability to do that. And then he sent them. And they were shocked out of their mind that the authority that he gave to them just by speaking his name, the devils had to obey. I want you to be touched by Jesus from such a way. You have to be touched by him in a real way for that result to be accomplished in your life. When you're touched by him in a real way, all of a sudden you're not overwhelmed by the things which your eyes see and which your ears hear. Suddenly you stand in the presence of the living God and you are aware that you're going to give an account for him to him for everything that you've done in your life, for everything that you say, for every move that you make, for every decision that you make, for every deed of your life. You are there before him. He's visible to you in a, in a very conscious way. The fear of the Lord is there then. The fear of the Lord. I know when people have the fear of the Lord because the fear of the Lord causes you to depart from evil. That's what God said. The fear of the Lord causes you to hate it and to depart from it. There are many people 
As Paul said in Romans 3.18, there is no fear of God before their eyes. God, the Holy Ghost, wants to change it. He wants to bring to you a revelation of the person Jesus Christ. That's why he's come. That's why he came in power and glory. He is in such submission to God. He doesn't live his own, uh, his own life or function in the realm of his own identity. He speaks nothing of himself. His whole purpose is to glorify Jesus and reveal Jesus and make Jesus known. And anybody who hangs out with the Holy Ghost is going to come to know the majesty and the glory and the present reality of the person Christ Jesus. That will change everything. You'll find yourself, I don't think that the 70 were that full of faith. The 70 others. But I guarantee you, they were, they were biting up a bit to go. They were ready to go. They were just... Happy to be counted in the number and be sent by the Lord. And then they turn with, returned with joy, saying, The devils are subject to us through your name. Later on, John is going to run, and a few of the rest of them are going to run into a guy who wasn't hanging out with Jesus. He wasn't, he wasn't sent by Jesus. He just watched the disciples casting out devils in the name of Jesus. And so he went and started doing it himself. Casting out devils in Jesus' name. And John comes to Jesus and said, we ran into a person casting out devils in your name, but he wasn't following us, and so we forbid him. Jesus said, don't forbid him, because nobody who had cast out devils in my name could possibly be against us or lightly speak of us or disregard us or disrespect us. All you got to do is get a glimpse of the power of God that is manifest in Christ Jesus, and these works will be in your life. If. You refuse to be intimidated. If you refuse to be stopped. Ha. Ah. Hallelujah. God make you bold and strong and ferocious. But listen to me, David. You need to. And so does all of your generation. If you're distracted with other things, this will never be a reality. All you'll ever have is religion. You'll have a knowledge of God, but no power of it. You listen to me. I see people walk around saying, oh, yeah, no, they, with, they, you know, and, and, you know, they have a form of godliness, and, but they deny the power thereof. And they themselves are a candidate for that. Where's your power? Where's the power of the name of Jesus manifested in your life? It's got to be. And it begins on a personal basis. Of, you have an interest for Jesus more than you have an interest for your education. Or for the opinion of people around you. Watch out. Watch out. The enemy of your soul will destroy you. He don't care how he's got to do it. There's only one place of safety. Come here, up here, into the realms where the Holy Ghost overshadows you. The power of the living God lives and abides in you and dwells with you. And you walk with him in his divine glory. Baptized in his fire. I mean, tonight I was just so blessed. Ruth Anna taking a hold of it. Taking a hold of it. Just taking a hold of it. With all, of that, with all of that wall of opposition, taking a hold of it, oh, God, send you fire, send you glory. Somebody that's not going to be set down and shut up and, and put into their place by the powers of darkness. Jesus, Jesus said this. Here's what Jesus said. He goes, kind of like, no problem, guys. I beheld Satan when he was cast out of heaven to the ground as lightning. That's how quickly it happened. <laughs> Satan, you can hear Satan's voice. Yeah, well, if God really loves me, he will accept me for who I am. He's not going to accept you for who you are. He calls you as you are to change you to make you like him. He calls you as you are to change you so that you can be made like him. You hear me? He doesn't accept any man's person. He loves the whole world, but you're going to have to be changed by the power of the living God so that the living God can have a relationship with you. And that's only possible through calling on the name of Jesus because as soon as you say Jesus, Holy Ghost shows up. You know how that first got established in my life? How that faith first got established in my life that if I said Jesus, Holy Ghost shows up? When I was born of God. My wife was born of the Spirit. She was born again. 
in a, in, in a, in a, in a Durham in a college. Huh? November the uh, 11th. At what time? About around 7 o'clock. Right around 7 o'clock. 1980. 1980. Amen. And when she did, she found out that when she said, Jesus, the Holy Ghost showed up. That's our first initial experience. I've discovered over and over and over and over and over again that when I say Jesus, the power of God is present. What? I'm what? What do you need? Do this, Lord. Break off this yoke. Strengthen your people. Turn this thing around, O oh God, that religion be not the strong man of the day. Jesus said this. He said, behold. He said, notice. He said, notice, really. To say in the Hebrew language, hineni. Nice word? Hineni. He says, you can translate it low or behold or take notice. So he says, take notice. I'll give you authority. I gave you authority. Just previously, he gave them power to cast out devils. He gave them power over against unclean spirit, where the they, unclean spirit had to obey their word when they spoke in Jesus' name. He says, take notice. See that right there? Take notice. I give unto you power. Take notice, really. I have given unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing can by any means hurt you. Listen, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. That's, that's just a very basic experience of knowing Christ Jesus. That's a basic experience of walking with God. That's the fundamental right of every person who knows him. And of course, you know, Jesus said, nevertheless, don't, he says, nevertheless, in this rejoice not. Don't rejoice that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. He said, the, really what Jesus is saying, he's saying, listen, the reason the devils have got to obey you is because your name's written in heaven. My name is written out before the Father. I mean, the prophet said he's inscribed his names upon, my name upon the palms of his hand. Is your name there? Is your name written in God's book? Is your name written in heaven? Is your name a memorial before the Lord? Are you living out a, a life as a man of faith? Are you going to stand in the number of the hall of faith? People want to stand in the hall of fame for men. How about laying up treasure? How about being rich towards God? How about having treasure in heaven? How about having a life that lasts forever? How about being rich towards God? A man who gave himself over to laying up, storing up riches. He said, look, my ground's brought forth plenty. I'll tear down my barns and big, build bigger barns. I'll take all of my goods and bring it in and say to my soul, relax. You got everything you need. And God says, you're a fool. All you can see is your present life now. You have no knowledge of forever. This night, I will require your soul. And you're going to understand forever. And Jesus said, be rich towards God. Don't be caught up in covetousness. Dear people, got to understand. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. I beg you, listen to me. Or would you please listen to me? Covetousness is the sin of idolatry. Covetousness has an effect on every single human being in this place, including myself. It's just my, the only difference may be is I recognize the influence. And I give no place to it. It would try to snare you and take you and consume you and lead your affections and your vision and your purpose and your life away into a realm that is total temporal and it's like a vapor. It's like the early morning mist that as soon as the sun rises, it quickly vanishes. That's your life and that's what your treasure is on the earth. Wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. And God says, don't you go seeking after this and don't you go seeking after that. People think it's something wonderful to have a house and have it paid off. 
My God, you've got a bigger plan than that. Please. Please. You're not taking your house with you. We're not stuffing it in the grave with you. It's not going to get transported from here to there. Give me a break. You labor all your life to have your house paid off. Meanwhile, you have no house in heaven because you didn't give your life to seeking the kingdom of God. Listen, I hear a lot of people, everybody wants to say that, yes, they're living the life of Christ. What life are you living? Oh, I'm living the life of Christ. I'm living the life that Jesus gave me. I gave him living the life of the abundant life. Well, if you are, then you're not living your self-interest life anymore. If you truly are living the life of God, that means you're living the life of the Spirit, the God quality, the God kind of life, which is a life full of everything that He Himself possesses. You're not living for yourself anymore. You're not living in a place of despondency and sadness and sorrow. Self-interest. Everybody chooses. What life are you going to live? I'm going to live the life of Christ. He gave it to me. He exchanged His life for mine. Amen. He became the sin offering for me so that I might be the righteousness of God for him. And I'm going to be that. Amen. Christ Jesus, my righteousness. Christ Jesus, my life. And I know very clearly when my life would try to live. If I should be wrapped up in things that would cause sorrow and doubt and uncertainty or anger or strife or any kind of bitterness or any kind of unforgiveness or any kind of loss or any kind of realm that is other than the very life of Christ, that is, that is a life that I refuse to live. I'm not living that life. I'm living the life of Jesus. I'm living the one that God described concerning himself. I'm living the one that the Holy Ghost is supplying. Full of love and joy and peace and goodness. Full of love and joy and peace and goodness. Full of love and joy and peace and goodness. It's life, abundant life right now. Yeah. Where does it come from? I take a drink. I get up in the morning, I take a drink. I get filled with the Spirit. I don't wake up in the morning and think about how I'm going to live my life for myself. Come on, people, stop that, stop that, stop it now. You bought with a price, you're not your own. From this day forward, glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are His. You cannot live on the sidelines. Scott told me today, he said, I'm tired of living on the sidelines. Tired of living in the past. Tired of living in this, this, this neutral position, as this defensive position. I said, yeah, that's right. You're going to have to get aggressive because all God's people that are doing anything in the kingdom and have any right to walk with God are aggressive. They're aggressive. We're not holding down the fort. Amen. We're not, you're holding down the fort, you're going to get run over top of. Amen. Today, listen to me. Today, you are sowing what you will have tomorrow. I was so blessed watching my wife standing over there in a place where she had pain and torment to the level just like having a heart attack. And I saw her hands lifted up towards heaven and I knew that it was painful for her to even lift her hands. But she was sowing into the things of the Spirit. She wasn't allowing pain to be her God. Huh? To tell her what she's going to do. She wouldn't allow circumstances that oppose her, shove her into a, a place of, of silence. Now look at that. Look at that sacrifice of praise. Come on now. People make all kinds of excuses for why they behave the way they do and live the way they do. And it's only a proof positive that you're living a self-interest life. You're living your own life. You're not living the life of Christ. You're not living the life of the Spirit. You're not living the life of God. You're not living the kind of life that has been fully given to us on a level that it would be inexhaustible expressions of His glory like rivers flowing out. Decide today. Because if you make the decision... To begin to walk in this faith, you're going to have yourself an increase. And that increase is going to be an increase of God. I tell you, the increase of God is better than $10 trillion. And that's just the start. Ha! It's better than the whole earth packaged up into a deed of trust and put in your name. It's better. Than all being the owner of everything. To know Jesus. To walk with him. To walk with him and to know him in such a way. That those things that he's doing you get to do. 
to know him in such a way that his power is effective, not ineffective, effective, real, living. You have, you have a witness that he's right there. Job said, lo, he passed before me and I did not perceive it. He stood beside me and my eyes could not discern. Oh, but what happens? Oh, his secret is with those who fear him. What happens when you fear him? The secret of the Lord, the things that he's doing, the things that is happening in his heart and that he's purposed to do begins to become unveiled and revealed to you. It's a wonderful thing to wake up and have the presence of the Lord standing over top of you and you think it's a light, a bright light. Somebody just put a floodlight in your face. People want to talk about, well, I, I felt the presence, I felt the presence of evil. Presence came into the room and it was the very presence of evil. Goodness gracious, what a terrible thing, you know. I, I'm an expert at discerning this evil and this, this was the worst kind of evil. It's the evil of evils. It's there standing before me in my bed. Goodness gracious, you need to close that door. You know, shut off. That communion. How about recognizing the presence of the living God? Ah, it's the very presence of goodness. The very goodness of goodness. The goodness beyond all of the goodness. A joy unspeakable. A glory that overwhelms your soul where you know all is well. You have perfect peace. You are kept by the power of God. He himself is your protector and defender. You never worry about your bills ever again. Amen. Amen. You never worry about threatening circumstances again. Somebody said, oh, you better be concerned about that. And, you know, I started getting concerned about it a little bit. And the Lord said, what are you doing? And I, like, what am I doing? <laughs> There's no way that those things can have any power over me. For you, Father God, have set your affection upon me. You love me so earnestly, nobody can touch me. Then I got, then, then my next response over those things was I got aggressive. Huh? So I said, I'm worried about it that much about it. I'm just, I got aggressive. Huh? Because easy, every one of us can easily be taken by the, influences around us by the threats that have been postured against us bills being one of them irs being another one huh school being another one grades being another one boss being another one threat of your loss of your job being another one what's another one your mortgage What's another one that consumes your heart at night when you lay in the bed? And oh, what are you burdened for? What are you passionate about? Oh, God, i got to make money to keep this place. <laughs> Watch out, that's covetousness. Instead of souls gripping your heart, the purposes of God, what's going on in Father's heart, gripping our heart, we're far away from it. He can't touch us because we've been overwhelmed by the cares of this life, by the deceitfulness of riches, by the pleasures of this world, and He can't come commune with us at night. Not me. Not me. Why well, I become I become discerning. See, if you, you if you allow the word of God, if you'll read the word of God, if you'll meditate upon the word of God, it exercises your senses so that you can discern between what's right and wrong, what's good and evil, what's messing with you subtly that you really wouldn't discern otherwise. Amen. Amen. My name's written in heaven. I'm partners with God. I'm a co-inheritor with Christ Jesus. He died just for me. I don't, you know, the thing about it is I have no power over other people's will. I could have never made the choice for others. Reality of it is, if no one would have cho chosen but me, he would have died for me. If he would have had to wait 2,000 years till I showed up, that's how personal this is for me. God wants it to be that personal for you. When it does, something changes in your life. You don't have some kind of flippant attitude towards sin and taking his blood for cleansing. It's dripping from your hands. And it's grieving your heart. You're broken of his over his sufferings for your iniquity. 
And you bring the blood of your sacrifice. And you take this precious blood. You apply it to your life so that your sins may be washed away. And then you find yourself saying, Lord, I'm not going to do that and again. By your help and your strength, I'm yours. I'm yours alone. You find a place in him where you have all power and authority over every unclean spirit. And then you recognize that sin comes not as a desire from within, but as a desire from without. And it is your enemy. It is the enemy of God. It's that which nailed him to the tree. And you're not going to participate in crucifying him afresh. Come on now. I'm talking to you about growing up. I'm talking about growing up from the perspective of being able to see. Having your eyes open. You're never going to really advance and grow and mature until your eyes are open. Until you can see. The knowledge of men will blind you so you cannot see. You'll never produce those things, that fruit that God demands. God commands it. A new life, a changed life. He commands the expression of this life through our lives. He commands it. He demands it. Do you command it? Do you demand it? Do you? When you do, it is made manifest. It is made manifest. I posted the other day, you, know, must, you saw the daily bread. Christy's been faithfully putting out for us. Obey them that had the rule over you. And a theologian I know, he wrote a little comment. He said, yeah, it's the church's responsibility to evaluate those as to whether they are progressing or not. I said, look, Daddy, nobody believes that anymore, man. You might as well just, you know, be quiet, basically. Nobody believes that. What? You have the right to evaluate whether people are progressing to God or not and to put them in the corner, the hot seat. Yeah, that's true. That's what the scripture's talking about. A guy wrote to me from Greece. He says, thank you, Pastor, for reminding us of the submission that must be in our life and warning all of those who are rebels. I said, my, I thought, my goodness, he needs to move to America. He's over there in the Greek Orthodox Church. Nothing changed. It's just some people know it. Over here in the U.S. of A., you know, we all masters of our own opinion. No, you're not. You're a puppet on somebody's string at best. The only way you could possibly be liberated and be free is if you know Christ Jesus. Then you're now moving, you're moving to his song. Hallelujah. Dancing to his rhythm. Hallelujah. Ha, ha. Hallelujah. Filled up with all his good thinking and good things that he has for us. Now you're moving Opposite to the course of this world. And submission, hallelujah, is something you delight in. And rebellion, far from you. You recognize every indication of it, every sense of it, every feel of it. See, what I'm going to tell you, I'm engaged in a new dimension of a battle. And I began it on another level on Friday night. I began to speak against the spirit of rebellion and ascension that has found its place in the Christian home, in the midst of the marriage of a man and a woman, which represents Christ in his church. I'm on it. I'm on it. Papa says, tell me. Father told me, he said, you don't worry about the finances. Don't worry about the attendance. Don't worry about your approval ratings. Stand here and speak all these things which I put in your mouth and be faithful to declare them. And I'll be with you. Amen. I'm going to do that, man. I'm laying out my treasure right now. All of us, we always find ourselves at the crossroads of where our treasure is going to be, of what we really need. Do we need the approval ratings of men or do we want the approval of God? Hold up for you answer too quick. Because when you start living only for his approval, I'm telling you some dynamics begin to take place in your life, radical changes. New kinds of expressions are begin, begin to be revealed through you. 
And I call you in Jesus' name, come take a hold of this power of God. Come take a hold of this life of God. Come take a hold of this consecration and commitment tonight. It does not matter how many times you fail at your commitment. Just get up the next time with that much more determination, that much more resolve, that much more concentration, consecration to Him. And watch what He'll do. Ah, he'll begin a good work in you with that kind of attitude. going to finish it. But if He's going to finish it, you're going to have to give Him something to work with. You know what I'm saying? You know, the best visual that I have of humility of being humbled, humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God. Because that's what humility is all about. Really, humility is all about you and your walk with God. He takes care of all the rest. If you don't have humility before God and your walk with God, you're going to have any humility anywhere else that matters anything. The greatest visual that I have of humility is the softest, pliable, moldable clay that can be in the hand of a potter. Or a sculpturist. It's not hard. It's not rigid. It's not stony. It's not grainy. Soft. It's perfectly needed. Ha. Ah, that's me. God the Holy Ghost made me that. And every day, every day, there is a shaping going on in our lives. And every day, it's the Word of God that comes and touches our heart. And our responsiveness to Him and our willingness to obey keeps that clay soft. The authority that Jesus has given us to live the life that He has the privilege and the blessing and the gift that he's given to us to live the quality of life that God himself has. How can we, how can we be faultless or guiltless if somehow we fail to take advantage, treasure, value it and esteem it above everything else, the privilege of having it? The privilege of being able literally to walk into the throne of grace every day and yet we don't do it. The privilege to be able to interact with God in an unlimited access with Him and we would somehow put other things as more important. Shouldn't, shouldn't that be judged harshly? Shouldn't that be condemned by each one of us? Wouldn't we be in jeopardy of hearing something other than well done? I gave you all the quality and beauty and splendor of my life, but you liked yours, yours better. I gave you all the access to the realms of faith and power and divine grace and purpose, but you had your own vision that you wanted to pursue. And you tried to write me into it. Think about it, dear people. How much of your life are you trying to write God into? Trying to get him to agree with what you're doing. Father has proclaimed his word. He's called us to come. Let's go with him. Let me tell you how it begins. You ready? It's not by works. It's not by all the deeds. It's not by all the doings. It's by you being overwhelmed with his presence. So much so that his love, his joy, his quality of life has taken hold of you and become to be the expression in your life and you stay right there. And having stayed right there and having lived there and having kept, kept your conduct there, your demeanor there. Hallelujah. When you feel like frowning, you smile. I, that, that, and, the, and then you smile till the joy comes. Huh? Yeah. Rom bandain. Huh? When you, when, you, when you feel it's something that is opposing you from the presence of God, you run through a troop, you leap over a wall, and you stand up tall in the presence of the living God. Huh? You, 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 de you place a demand upon the things which God has given you. You choose it with all your heart, in other words. You cleave unto Him. You lay hold on eternal life. You won't let it slip. Hmm. 
How valuable is the life that Jesus gave to you? I pray tonight that after this being here in this place, it becomes more valuable than it's ever been. That the life that he gave is a treasure that it goes beyond all other treasures. It's the vision. It's the purpose. It's the desires of your heart. It's the passions of your life. You care not for anything else. Throw it away. Nothing keeps me from church. Never has and never will. Nothing is of more interest to me. Never has been. Never will be. I make God my refuge. My habitation. There's nothing going to keep me from doing the things that he's commissioned me to do. Seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Because if you're not doing that, you're doing the other. And I tell you, there's nothing more wonderful, no more, nothing more glorious to be doing with your life. And laying hold on him. And having access to him. I have access... 24 hours a day to the king of the universe. Ha! <laughs> Think about that. I have access to the one who makes all decisions concerning all events and all of creation 24 7. And so do you. True. You really do. You do. You really, really do. It's just the enemy gets up in your face. And, and intimidates you and tells you, you don't. You really, really don't. God doesn't really care for you. He doesn't have his best, he doesn't have your best interest in mind. That's what he says. That's what he said to Eve. He doesn't have your best interest in mind. He doesn't really care. He's not really here. You're going to have to take charge of the situation. You hear me? That's his voice. He still talks exactly like he talked in Genesis. Exactly like he talked in Exodus. In Numbers. In Deuteronomy. Still talks the same way. I know I left out Leviticus. That's priestly. That's just God talking there. Satan got one little word in chapter 16. That's it. We got one deed in. You know what I'm talking about. Somebody started sipping on a little suds and came into the presence of the Lord. He struck them down with his presence. Yeah. Okay, they came in with strange fire. And there he gave the prohibition against any kind of alcohol content in the bloodstream when you start stand into his presence. I live in his presence. He lives in me. And no intoxication going to be around here. Amen. Amen. You want to drink some alcohol, you're going to have to go back under the law. If you want it that bad. I would not tell you right now, I wouldn't do that if I were you. It's a terrible trade. Besides that, when you're filled with the Spirit, you don't want it. When you're filled with the Spirit, it would be a vexation to your soul and spirit. It would grieve the Holy Ghost and you'd know better. Only people that go around talking about drinking alcohol and it's okay are the people who have not the Spirit of God. And that's a thus saith the Lord. I'm standing on behalf of Father. I'm standing on behalf of Father in His stead, declaring these things right now that I speak. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> and I speak them only to just I speak them only to deliver your soul from the snare of the devil. That's it. Whew. Why not just live in love and joy and peace and goodness? Oh, love and joy and peace and goodness. <laughs> If you, if, you, if you drink of this world, if you drink of the things that this world has to offer, you can't drink of the things of the Spirit. If you allow those things of this world to flow forth from your life, then the things of the Spirit can't flow forth from your life because sweet and bitter water will not come out of the same fountain. You're going to have to cut that stuff off. First thing that has to happen, you've got to be able to discern. That discernment isn't going to come till you meet Jesus. Till you meet him. Hallelujah. I met him. I was raised in church, my daddy being a preacher. And I went to the altar and I 
Respond to the altar call, baptized hundreds of times growing up. And I had different experiences in the presence of the Lord, but one day I met Jesus. Ah, one day met, I met him. I personally met Jesus. I didn't see him, but I met him. I met him in such a radically radical way that everything about my life radically changed. And I've been in love with him ever since. And every day, every day, every day, it gets better and better. It gets sweeter and sweeter. I keep falling in love with him. Over and over. And over and over again. I keep falling in love with him. You guys keep playing what you were playing. Over and over. And over and over again. It gets sweeter and sweeter as the day goes by. Oh, what a love between the Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him. Over and over. Every day I wake up, wow, you're amazing. You, you're Jesus. You're the one who saved me by your grace and loved me more than I could have ever loved you. Oh, God. Jesus, you're amazing. Jesus means the one who saved me from my sins. You shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save you from your sins. Jesus, he's the life giver. <laughs> He's the one who poured out the life of God so the life of God may flow into me. Poured out through, as it were, his very body flew into me. Every drop of life flowed out of Jesus so that you and I could partake of it tonight and live in it. Satan has no rights to interfere. He has no rights to be here. It's no right to access your life and torment your life and ruin your life ever again. Amen. Amen. Before I close, I want to read one other verse of Scripture to you. And then I'm going to pray for some people. Anybody still sick, hurting, in pain, diseased? Pain's stricken from this place. You'll have to leave to find it. Stricken. Stricken from this place. If a doctor diagnosed you right now, examined you right now, you wouldn't have the disease. They'd have to take you outside to find it. But I tell you, there's a place to walk with God that when you go outside, he's right there with you as much as he is here right now. The power of the living God governs you, directs you, even controls and ordains every step that you take. Oh, hallelujah. So that you can say you're right in the center of the will and plan. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. Ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah. Today I, I grew up a little bit. Uh, today I got insight I didn't have before. Today I know more about how to effectively stop everything Satan's doing. Today I have more insight to flow and function in the master plan. And the grace that God has given. Every day is growth and maturity. Every day is an opportunity. Every day God offers to each one of us the fullness of all that he possesses. He doesn't withhold it from anybody. Quit living in the past. Quit living in the programs uh, uh, of things that happened long ago. Start advancing now. Start taking an aggressive position. Start believing what God says and go and doing it like you've been given all rights and privileges by God himself. To do whatever he would do if he was standing there. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's the way it happened. That's the way it happened with Joshua. He said, son, stand still. Move, don't move. Why? He was given authority. Ah. He didn't call everybody together and say, we're going to have, have a prayer meeting now. Pray, ask God, please do something. We don't know what you want to do. Oh, God, thy will. And he didn't say that. Whatever, well, God, we don't know what to do. Somebody had wisdom and insight from the anointing that was given. Knew how to command the sun and the moon. Knew how to command the elements. Knew how to subdue kingdoms. Alter the courses of nature. Whew. My God in heaven is beautiful. He's so wonderful. He's so living in my, my being right now. My God in heaven is real. So real to me. Why? Because as the song goes, my soul demands reality. I want to, on my way over to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, I want to stop off at 1 John <laughs> and remind you of what he was saying. I want to hear him speak for a minute. He's still speaking. Can you hear John? Here's John. He that committeth sin is of the devil. Hear him speaking. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. I've asked the Lord to so increase the anointing in my life that religious people will act around me the same way they acted around him, want to kill me. That's a good way to get discernment. In other words, if they want to kill you, you know what the problem is. That's a religious spirit. Ha <laughs> ha. I don't want one power of darkness to be comfortable around me for one single second. I want Holy Ghost conviction to be so strong in here that the only way people can sit in this place is because they're desperate for God. And that would be the beginning. That would be the seed that would begin to start a great outpouring of God the Holy Ghost. In San Diego County, because there would be a remnant of people who are right with God, who've laid hold on the power of God. Are you listening to me? Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Oh, no That's what God's doing. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I feel his mighty presence. Jesus is here to destroy the works of the devil. That's what he does. That's his ministry. That's the ministry of Jesus. That's why he said, These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They will cast out devils. Ha <laughs> ha. Because that's his ministry, to destroy the work of the devil. Devils, evil spirits, oppress and afflict and torment and bind men in ma many different ways. They oppress their thoughts and their minds so that they cannot... Move on in the authority which Christ Jesus given. They oppress their thoughts and their minds and their life so that they're overwhelmed with self-interest in the cares of this life, even to the point of tormenting their soul with depression and disease and sickness and all kinds of, of weaknesses. That needs to come to an end for you. Now, because you're going to walk around singing the song, I drink of the water of life. I will drink of the water of life. I will drink of the water So the river of God will flow out. The river of God will flow out of my belly right now. Wherever you're at, wherever you're at, wherever you're at, whatever situation you're in. Huh? You walk into the boss's office and he tells you, he starts manifesting. Huh? Because he hung out with the powers of darkness all weekend. You was here in the meeting. You walk in, the glory of light strikes him. 
every devil in hell begins to stir inside of him, making him feel that much more miserable. He calls you in the office because he doesn't know why you at fault and you to blame, but somehow, you know, you're it. Huh? And then you get, get, just, just get finished taking some kind of, of harassment from a demon spirit through a man called your boss, and you just go, I drink of the water of life. Oh, I drink of the water of life. I drink of the water of life. So the river of God will flow out. Oh, the river of God will flow out of my belly right now. His love and His joy, His peace and His goodness. His love and His joy, His peace and His goodness. His love and His joy, His peace and His goodness. His life abundantly right now. That's where I live. How do you live? See, that's living the life of God. See, I determined to live the life of Christ. I, did, I said, I'm not living my life no more. My life is sad, sorrowful, dysfunctional. Huh? My life, my life, this looks like nothing but humanity with all of its problems, ailments, and issues. But the life of Jesus the life of God the life of the spirit the God kind of life you mean I can live the God kind of life every second of every day yes. then you must be filled with the spirit yes. you must drink yes. see when you're born you're born once well you know by the model and we, we know that all of us we were born twice in here amen Praise God. Hallelujah. But by the, by the allegory, you're born once. But we drink all the time. Huh? How many drinks have you had today for your body? How many drinks? Can you count your drinks right now? Can you begin to count them? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then that tea you made me, eleven. Think about drinking 11 times from the things of the Spirit. Think about every time you get ready to drink something of the natural for your body, you go ahead and take a drink for the spiritual. You lose the English language. Overwhelmed with the joy and the life and the peace and the goodness. Have divine power and authority strengthened by the Spirit. Now, now listen, 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 listen. See, everybody seems to know this verse of Scripture, but it seems like very few people know how to do it. Everybody seems to know what Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 says. Be strong therefore in the strength of the Lord and power of his might. Everybody seems to know that. Everybody seems to be very rational and logical why you, wanted, why you would want to do that. Because you wrestle not against flesh and blood. Huh? But against spiritual wickedness. So that you may be able to stand against all the tricks of Satan. Hey, listen, if you, I'm gonna, can, can I bring it down to you this way? Can I help you understand something? If you're not strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might, you cannot stand against the tricks of Satan. Okay? Because that's what Paul said. It said, be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might that you may be able to stand against all the tricks of Satan. Therefore, we may logically, logically conclude, I get it out here, a little drunk, logically conclude, but not as you supposed, no, as you do, no, as you suppose. Amen. <laughs> One night I was driving down the highway and I was so drunk in the Holy Ghost. I was on Highway 15 driving about 80 miles per hour and a policeman was following me for about 15 minutes. And I didn't know he was back there. He rolled me over, he walked up, he had a big smile on his face. He said, man, you drive really good. He said, do you ever look in your rearview mirror? 
He said, I've been following you a long time. He said, I'm very impressed with your driving. And I was so drunk in the Holy Ghost, man. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> he, said, he said, you ought to slow down a little bit and start practicing looking in your rearview mirror. And then he went, we went back to his car. I'm sure as he was following me, he was being overwhelmed by what was going on inside my, my life. Because he was touching, he was connecting with me. He was connecting with me in a unique way. But I'm, I believe this stuff. I really believe this. This happened. This was a reality. Everybody knows they need to be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might. But so it seems that there's so few people understand how to get strengthened. You must drink of the waters of life. You must drink of the waters of life. I'll drink of the waters of life. So the river of God will flow out. Oh, the river of God will flow out of my belly right now. <laughs> I don't want you to forget this song, okay? I do la da mong ataya. Hallelujah. Do not forget this song. Do not forget. The word of God will strengthen you. I write unto you young men because you're strong. The word of God abides in you and you've overcome the wicked one. See? See that? Do you see that? Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. See the power of the word of God, the seed of the word of God. If the word of God remains in you, you will not sin. That's what John says. People can't figure that out. What do you mean you cannot sin? No, when you're in agreement with the word of God and, and overwhelmed by the word of God and receiving that revelation and that comfort and that, and that purpose that the word of God, the living, powerful word of God has, that kind of communion, I'll tell you right now, you'll be up in heaven. You know, I'll be messing around with demon spirits taking you out. You must be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might if you're going to stand against the wiles of the devil. You're not going to get that out of religion. You're not going to... Look, I see people who go through a lot of body motions... I know the difference. I Listen to me. I know the difference of whether you're drawing nigh to God with your intellect or with your heart. Because the matters of the heart is a passion and it's a love. It's not a thought, not an attitude. It's a passion. It's a love. You love oh, it's so easy to touch heaven. So easy. Because you love. The love is there. There's not, a, there's not a guilt, there's not a complaint, there's not a condemnation, there's not a hope so, there's not a doubt, there's not an unbelief. It's just, a, it's just, it's just overwhelming to love. That's how you touch heaven. That's how heaven touches you. Then all the body motions stop. All the trying to, all the efforts of human ability. It's not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. The power of the living God will come upon you and fill you with this love. We know we need to be strong, but how do we get strengthened? Paul said, like this in Ephesians 3, verse 16. Be strengthened by the Spirit in your inner being. So the Holy Ghost will strengthen us if we'll drink. The Word of God will strengthen us. Fellowship and praise and worship. We'll find a place of communion and connection with Him as we started off tonight referring to Isaiah chapter 12, verse 3. With joy shall ye draw water from the well. You decide, I'm not going to be sad, I'm not going to be perplexed, I'm not going to be in panic. I'm not going to be overwhelmed. I'm not going to be trying to make something happen. I'm going to get happy right now and be glad because it's been taken care of. Amen. Amen. I'm going to take care of the issues and I'll move right on into glory. Amen. Amen. I want you to stand with me.